discussing the road bed for your trains. As you can tell, this is an HO scale garden railroad, and I've had quite a few inquiries about, uh, you know, what I did and what holds up best. So, uh, stay tuned, and hope you enjoy. This HO scale garden railroad has been in this uh, area for probably about five years now. And over the years, I've used several different methods of passing the track down to the road bed or doing my road bed in general to try to get a sturdy foundation for the trains that would last throughout the summer and winter months. The first method that I used, which would probably work great if you were in a state that didn't have snow, was uh, I pounded pegs into the ground and then nailed the track to the top of them. I've always used a flexible track, that way I can get a nice soft radius and curve. So that method worked well. Worked great during the summer, looked good, and of course I do my ballast around the track on either side to make it look pretty much as you see it as it is now. And the method worked well. And I just as soon as these uh, winter months came, the pegs would shift, rise and fall. And come springtime, it pretty much all needed to be done. I could reuse the track, but the roadbed needed to be taken out and replaced. The next method I tried was taking uh, three quarter inch plywood and measuring all of the radiuses of my curves and cut about inch and a half wide strips of plywood to go under the track and nail the track to the plywood and do my ballast around that. Of course, the ends of my plywood would be connected around all of the track, and I uh, joined them together where I had double wide tracks like this. Worked well, held up great during the summer, I actually had that in for two years. During the winter, the ballast around the sides would crack and fall off, and my track was still pretty level. Eventually what happened is the plywood started to absorb moisture and water, and it started to warp, twist, bend, and the next thing you know, I had pieces of track that were not level from side to side. So, this system here that I have in, I put it in May, so it's been in for about seven months, and I'm expecting it to hold up well during the winter season. This is the first road bed I have that I can actually walk on to get to the plants I have in the center, either to weed them, plant new plants, trim, whatever needs done to your plants and it's worked well. What, it, what I did was I dug a trench and filled that trench with concrete, leveled it off, then essentially that was the top of my roadbed. I should also mention that before you pour your concrete roadbed, you should uh, consider running wires anywhere that need to go where it might need to cross under or through the concrete. This is one instance where the uh, wires connect to the track for power on each one. I've got them going to the inner loop and the outside loop to make sure uh, through the switch, I don't lose any electrical continuity. So I ran those wires before I poured the concrete and then later cut them to length and, and soldered them to the rail. And so if I was to do it again, I would have thin strips of plastic or other flexible material to form boundaries for the concrete. That way I could level it off from side to side and to make sure there aren't any sharp hills or curves in the line. That and then after that, I laid my track on top, I followed the curves, and I actually used hot glue to temporarily fasten the rail to the roadbed. I'd pick a spot, say in the curve here, I'd glue it here, I'd follow down the rest of the curve, glue it maybe another spot down here, wherever I needed to to get the shape that I needed, and then I'd do the ballast around that. All of my joints between sections of track are held together with clips and then soldered to make sure they have good connections that I don't lose any uh, electrical flow around the circuit. To form the concrete road bed I use quick greet ready mix. Uh, the red I use the red bed because it was quick setting which was uh, convenient when you're trying to get the track laid and the road bed poured in one night. I also use the quick greet ready mix the red bags and stuff you see here for the material I use for the ballast. So I'll show you how I sifted that out real quick. It's not a hard process real easy. You can do it yourself. Separate the stones from the concrete mix. I just use an old sieve. Just like so, scoop it into the bag, place it into your sieve, stir it around. You should be wearing a respirator when you do this, or at least hope you have a good wind going in the opposite direction as your nose, as I do today. And I'm not doing a whole lot. Just shake it, kind of stir it around, and your concrete dust will fall into your bucket below. And let 
you'll have left is all the stones that you can wash off and put in your creek. Or anywhere else you need stones. I've uh, also tried using the mortar mix before so I didn't have to sort out the stones. found that it was not as strong and did not mold up at all. I would not recommend using mortar mix. I definitely suggest sorting out the stones like this. It's an extra step. takes a little while, but once you got some stones, you can use somewhere. I've got a spot in this front curve here where the ballast has started to come loose and the uh, track has shifted just a little bit. And I want to get that set back in and sealed up before winter, before water gets down in there, freezes, cracks, anything makes it worse. And this is the first I've adjusted or had to mess with any of the ballast in seven months. So actually that's a pretty good maintenance record as far as maintenance goes. So the first thing I'll do here is to take an old ordinary paintbrush, brush off the section that needs work, get any, you know, mulch, dirt debris or whatnot out of it as much as possible. Next thing you'll do is take your concrete dust that you sifted out with your sieve and uh, just apply it to the track. And this is the same deal if you have a concrete roadbed and you're applying the ballast for the first time. So you just sprinkle it on top. And a little bit more. And yes, you're applying it dry. This does not have any water in it. And then take your paintbrush and work it around to whatever looks good visually, whatever looks realistic, whatever looks good. It all goes by personal preference and what the look is that you're going for. Like and that looks good. The next step is take an old bottle. This is an old cleaner bottle of Fantastic. Fill it with water and repurpose it. Lightly spray down the track, moisten everything down. Do not get it uh, too wet as it'll start to shrink and crack up a little bit. So just moisten everything until it darkens. And since this is quick setting concrete, it won't be long before this is dry and ready to go. I also uh, just wipe off the rail. Is it necessary? Will the concrete stick to it? Eh, not really. But it's just an extra, extra little step. Make sure uh, nothing along the side of the track is up sticking higher than a rail. So if you had a car that were to swing out, even though this is the outside of the curve, not the inside, make sure that a car would not hit it. This can be a problem if you're running passenger cars that have steps coming down from the carriage that can hit little areas that stick up too high. And that's it. You're done. That's as easy as the ballast is. It doesn't take long.